Hello, this is Dom. Hi, this is Ash. And we are from Ludicrums. It is a very exciting time of year, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a lot of really cool projects coming up. And as a result of that, we've been going on a uh, spending spree, buying new toys and new things. And we just kind of thought um, that it would be a good opportunity to make a little video. Yes. Uh, to show off and talk briefly and say thank you, I guess, yes. for some of the cool things that people have made that we've got to uh, have a play with recently. So where should we begin? Yeah, let's start here with these guys. Bear pens um, are, for those of you that don't know, they are electrically conductive paint. It means you can draw circuit boards and you can paint with circuit boards. You can buy it in tubs and uh, uh, use it for screen printing and things like that. Yeah, we, we wanted to do something with e-textiles and we wanted to do something with um, smaller children, perhaps those that weren't able um, to kind of use soldering irons for whatever reason, health and safety. And this is just a really simple and easy solution to enable us to kind of work with that medium. What uh, a great product. Absolutely. And we've done uh, junior electronics projects and junior hack projects before using things like copper tape. Yeah, using um, tape and things. Crocodile clips. Um, which are great, but really exciting about the potential of this product. You should check them out, bearconductive.com. Yeah, more of a permanent solution. Those other things tend to fall apart after a bit, and we're hoping to build something that has a bit more longevity to it. Absolutely. Um, Thanks, guys. Next order that we did was um, getting some things from Active Robots. <laughs> now, Active Robots. Robots, really good supplier of uh, components. Uh, in the UK and we had to buy some bits partly for a commission that we've got for the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust and also partly for an upcoming um, project again when we're working with e-textiles uh, so um, what did we buy? Well they had far too many exciting and cool things for us to buy <laughs> so we had to only get what we needed for the project which is very hard. Absolutely but we did we, we, we did buy one little thing didn't we so yes. um, we bought a couple of these Nice little circuit mounted PIRs, we're going to um, use those running into Arduino um, and we're also going to use them running into Raspberry Pi and uh, this upcoming project for the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust will be our first project that's really um, powered by one of these bad boys. This is of course a Raspberry Pi sitting in the amazing Pibo created by Pimo Roni, um, and we're really looking forward to these are Model B boards. We're using two or three of these maybe in the SBT um, yeah. project, but really excited about using uh, such a exciting or yeah cool piece of technology. Really small um, because because all of our the work will be outdoors and electronics. Um, and also, it's about the project's about hiding the technology as much as possible, so that you don't really notice it as part of the of the experience. And what you really don't want is a giant server box at the base of a tree filled with all this technology. So actually, um, these machines uh, will be uh, incredibly useful uh, in terms of their power and capabilities, but. The, just the size of these, even if we have three of these, the amount of space that they'll take up. And the power consumption as well, I think, is a really big factor. Yes. Now, um, going back to active robots and this idea of making things outdoors, we've done things with um, range sensors before, range finders before, and this was uh, active robots may, meant that we could get hold of one of these, which is our uh, first time using a weatherproof XL Max Sonar weather resistant ultrasonic range finder yeah. a remarkably expensive yes. uh, component for what it is but again um, something we're really excited to looking for it's got a good range uh, will sense uh, the distance that something is away from the the, the, sensor. the sensor yeah so the idea for using this ultrasonic range sensor is to have it kind of um, hanging down to not only detect the presence of somebody but because of the fact that it's a range finder it will sort of bounce off the ground and give you a, a reading and then we'll be able to tell whether there's a child or an adult underneath it to you know trigger a different experience. So the next gadget that we got, we did buy quite a lot, right? the next gadget that we got our hands on was with the, uh, the Raspberry Pi obviously it gives you GPIO 
for getting your ins and outs off the board, getting your analog pins, but they are a bit of a pain to get to, as you can see in there. So um, the next thing, that, and these are really tough to get hold of at the moment. It just kind of shows how popular the Raspberry Pi as a platform is becoming. Yes. A million units sold now. But um, yeah, we're using a Pi cobbler from Adafruit Industries, which we had to wait a couple of weeks to get our hands on. Yeah, I mean, and this isn't a particularly expensive piece of kit. That's uh, £10 for this kit, the Pi Cobbler. Um, but as Dom said, with the popularity of the Raspberry Pi, this enables you to kind of bypass using an Arduino, and it enables you to kind of um, wire up sensors directly into this board to interface with the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, and it's just so much easier than using the GPI um, O-pins directly and also kind of lets you work a bit more closely on a breadboard yeah. um, for getting your pins in and out. So um, a nice little bag full of jumper pins and a, a nice ribbon cable as well because actually, you know, those 26-pin GPI O ribbon um, cables um, aren't desperately easy to get hold of either, no. so um, you can't just walk into places and pick them up. They're generally mail order only, so it all comes together in a nice little kit. Ten quid, Adafruit. Awesome. Good job. Uh, so carrying on the uh, Raspberry Pi um, thing, when I was down at BET, I was lucky enough to meet with Andrew Robinson, who's working on the Pi Face, another really great Raspberry Pi. And he showed me one of these uh, Dubri Watsits, little uh, Raspberry Pi... A specific Wi-Fi dongle called the Wi-Pi. Picked up one of those um, because uh, really interested in the idea of using um, VNC to control the Raspberry Pi so we don't have to always be plugging keyboards and things like that in and out. And to complete the stuff that we got from the Active Robots order, oh yes, this was the one thing which we saw and we went, do you know what? I like one of them. I want one of them. <laughs> So, uh, Ashley, would you like to explain a little bit about the Colour Pal? Yeah, so we've got a Colour Pal, which is a um, RGB camera uh, kind of sensor add-on that we can um, kind of wire up and detect colour changes and use that um, for value. So it's able to detect if something's red, if something's green, if something's blue, and it's really, really clever in, in the way it works. And uh, we just thought that could be really, really fun uh, it may or may not work for what we want to do, but it'd be really interesting if you could detect what colour coat somebody's wearing and maybe trigger a different response. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's the colour pal from Parallax Incorporated, which we picked up from Active Robots. And again, really interested to um, try out that little okay. play. So um, the last thing that we wanted to kind of show you in this part one of our epic unboxing <laughs> from uh, Lunic Rooms was... Uh, an amazing thing which my good friend Carrie Ann Philbin from Geek Girl Diaries uh, introduced me to, and that is the Makey Makey. We bought a couple of these. Yeah, the, so this has been developed kind of by uh, as a collaboration between some guys from MIT, uh, Joy Labs, and Sparkfun, who um, many people will know in America for components. And basically, this device is at its heart. It's an Arduino. An Arduino. Yeah, so it's a, it's a mega chip um, on the Arduino. So you've kind of got a uh, like a simple side, um, uh, interface side, and then a sort of advanced side. And I really like the idea that with one cool little device, you've got something that looks really user-friendly, doesn't it? And yeah. You've got these nice little holes for attaching a series of crocodile clips, and you get a nice big bundle of croc clips in with them. Makey, and then the other side is is the Ar is the Arduino side, uh, and and so you've got this kind of device where, as Dom says, you've got an entry level, easy to use, but actually, like with a lot of technology, they're kind of aimed at you've got intermediate users, advanced users. E with this device, as your confidence grows and as you kind of learn and want to tinker more, you can uh, kind of reprogram it to be an Arduino to plug in for the next level and as you become more confident you can then program it and, and add sensors and things but ultimately you can buy it, open the box, plug it into your computer via USB and it, immediately you're able to have physical interaction with with the computer and... Fantastic, so it kind of works like a controller, it, yeah. you can use it to do basic keyboard functions, um, it's a generic input device, it works 
um, natively on Mac, on Windows, on Linux, and Raspberry Pi. <laughs> Raspberry Pi, and um, and it's just amazing. And so to get some ideas of what you can do with the Makey Makey, it's makeymakey.com. So that's brought everything together for part one of our epic unboxing. We have another part two, which is even more epic and bigger. <laughs> So uh, join us again for some of the fun toys that we're glad to be sharing with you. This is Dom. This is Ash. And we are Ludicrums. <laughs>